Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to converting an Arduino pulse width modulated output signal to a digital analog output signal. And that's what we're exactly what we're going to do in this video. I know I mentioned Arduino. Even if you're not using Arduino or not familiar with Arduino, this video will be useful for you as well if you're just trying to take a PWM on a different type of microcontroller and use it as a DAC output. Of course, though, the I'm going to show some code examples that'll be Arduino specific in this uh, video. Uh, anyway, we're going to do exactly that, show you how to use a PWM signal as an analog signal, or change it to an analog signal, I should say. And if you look at my picture, we're actually going to do this. We're going to create an analog sine wave from a PWM signal, as an example. If you haven't already, uh, check out the Forstronics.com website. I recently dropped the price on the Arduino Uno and the Maker 1000 that I sell at my site. I cut the prices in half, so that's going to be a big sale that's going on for a while. Also. Check out Forstronics.com for Forstronics services if you're interested in that. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter. And if you like what you see here, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a little bit of theory. Uh, and I'm going to go through this pretty slowly. And we're not going to get deep into the math. But I think this is important for understanding how we're going to turn the pulse width modulated signal into an analog DC type signal. And I'll tell you right away, it's going to involve creating a filter, which we'll look at. What is a pulse width modulated signal? Well, any waveform or any signal can be represented either as DC or as a summation of different sine waves. And for a pulse width modulated signal, which is essentially a square wave signal, right? You have both DC elements and then you have sine wave elements. And if you look at the picture on the left, you can kind of see how from a fundamental sine wave frequency, we can add more sine waves and it starts to look like a square wave. So for instance, for a square wave, we have our DC component, right? And then we have our first main frequency. And this main frequency is gonna be for our pulse width modulated signal, it's gonna be whatever the pulse width modulation signal frequency is. So for, for instance, if you use the analog write function for Arduino, I believe the default frequency is about 500 Hertz. So if that's the case, that means our pulse width modulated signal would be DC plus 500 hertz. This would be the 500 hertz center frequency. Then from there, the way you get a square wave is you add odd harmonics at lower amplitudes. So we have our DC, we have our sine, and then we would add a... So if this is 500 hertz, this would be 1500 hertz, right? And then this would be 2500 hertz. So it's the odd harmonics going out. And now if, it, if we had a perfect square wave, which there's no such thing as a perfect square wave, but if we did have one, this would just go for an infinite, right? You would just keep adding these odd harmonic sine waves. And you might be saying, okay, why do we care about this theory? Well, we need to know this frequency as well as these other frequencies to know what value to use for our filter because we, we want to know what frequencies we want to attenuate with our filter. And that's what we're going to talk about. And it's important to note, the way we make an analog signal is essentially by filtering out all the sine waves and just having the DC component. And the DC component varies based on the pulse width modulation, right? The, the higher the duty cycle of the on time, the higher the DC is going to be, and then lower vice versa. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to get this DC value to create an analog signal from our pulse width modulated signal. Okay, and to do that, we're going to use a Salen key filter. And we're going to use an active filter. I know if you look online, a lot of people will show the, you know, the single pole uh, resistor and capacitor passive filter on pulse width modulated, six, pulse width modulated signals. You can definitely do that, but it's not a very effective. First of all, it's not a strong attenuation, so you're still going to have a, you know, it's not going to be a very clean DC signal at all. And then if you're using a passive filter, you also are going to attenuate a little bit of your DC as well. If we use an active filter, and an active filter because we have an amplifier in here, we can get a much better attenuation of the frequencies we, we don't want, as well as a much reliable, more reliable DC output. And so this is a Salem key filter. This is an op amp. I'm going to make an assumption that you have a basic understanding of op amps. These resistors and capacitors I used a filter calculator for that I'll show you in a second. And then what you're looking at is actually a cutout from a from a L spice 
model that I did to test this. And I actually have a video on low pass filters if you want to check that out for more detail on this. And uh, I'm actually going to show the, the, the design I used in that uh, video of low pass filters. I'll have a link in the video description here, but I'm going to use the design that I used for the, from that video to do the filtering for my pulse width modulation signal to DAC signal. And so I won't have the parts list in this video, but if you want to check that out, I'll provide a link in the description of my other in, in the description section of this video. Okay, so here is the Salem Key filter calculator that I used. If you just search Salem Key filter calculator, this will be the page that comes up. And basically what you do is I've already done it, but I've entered my resistor values and my capacitor values to make this, this active filter. And this equals a cutoff frequency of about 100 hertz. So that means around this frequency, the filter will start attenuating sine waves or frequencies or signals higher than that. Okay, and let me show that real quick actually. So this is showing the roll off of the filter. So right here is 100 hertz. So you can see we're starting to attenuate at 100 hertz. And then if you look all the way to 1000 hertz, you can see there's a 40 dB of attenuation and that's a lot. So by the time we get to 1000 hertz, we should pretty much have those signals pretty much cut out. Now, I'm showing you the, the calculator that's already uh, has the result. You can also go back here. You can enter the resistance and the capacitors, but you can also enter just the center frequency. So if, if I want to enter 100 hertz, it's going to tell me what capacitors and resistors you want to use. So that's what I use to get my filter value. And you might be asking, well, why'd you choose 100 hertz? And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so some important notes. Why did I choose 100 hertz? I could have chose 50 hertz and I would get better attenuation at my center frequency, whatever that is, 500 hertz, 1000. But there's a trade-off, right? So the lower the cutoff frequency, the more AC that you'll attenuate out of your signal. But the lower your cutoff frequency, the you can't move fast, right? Because if you try to move too fast, that has frequency elements and you're going to attenuate those. So the lower the cutoff frequency, the better, the cleaner the DC output, but the slower you can move your DAC value up and down. And once again, the higher the cutoff frequency, the faster you can change the analog output, but you have to deal with the fact that if you have an AC center frequency that gets close to the cutoff frequency, you're going to have a, lot, a strong AC element on your DAC signal output. So why is this important? Because based on your application, how fast you got to move your signal and based on how fast your pulse width modulation frequency is, that helps us balance what our cutoff frequency is. So one thing we can say right away is it's better for the pulse width modulation signal to have a higher frequency because that gives us a longer, larger range for choosing our cutoff frequency of our filter. So one thing I said earlier is the Arduino AVR boards, their default pulse width modulation signal is about 500 hertz. Well, there's ways to turn that, that frequency up, which I'll show you. And if we do that, we get more flexibility in our cutoff frequency. Let's look at an example of this. Here is an example on an oscilloscope where I captured first the pulse width modulation signal and then I ran the signal through our filter that we showed with 100 hertz cutoff and we got our DAC signal on the output. So you can see our pulse width modulation signal looks like a regular pulse width modulation signal. This is the default value of 500 hertz, which is the, the default value for Arduino. And you can see this is a DC signal, right? This is two volt, this is channel two. So I'm running this at a 50% duty cycle, five volts. So what do we expect to see? Well, this is one volt per division. So we see about two and a half. If we cut straight through this, we see about two and a half volts, which is what we should have, right? Because we're cutting it in half. We have a 50% duty cycle. Now we can also see the fundamental frequency of 500 Hertz. You can see the sine wave. Remember, the first signal element in a square wave is the center frequency, a sine wave representing the center frequency of the square wave. That's what we're seeing on top of this. And we can see we have, I don't know, about um, 800 millivolt peak to peak. Now for some applications, this might be fine, but for others, this might be too much of an AC signal on our DAC. So how do we prevent this? Well, if we turn up our pulse width modulation signal, I'm still using the same filter and the same hardware, all I did was turn up my pulse width modulation signal to three, 31 kilohertz, 
So here it is, and all of a sudden our DAC signal looks much cleaner. We can still see some noise on it, but it basically looks like a DC level here. And once again, one volt per division, so we see about two and a half volts. That's what we expect to see, right? So here we just changed our pulse width modulation signal into a clean DC signal. Next, let's look at actually creating a dynamic DAC signal where we're constantly moving it up and down and we can see some of the trade-offs associated with that. Actually, before that, let me show you my Arduino code and then we'll look at the video with a more dynamic example using the filter. Okay, here is my Arduino code. Basically, I declare some variables up here. Here is what I'm going to set my pulse width modulation example signal for. And this is the one you saw earlier, 127, which is essentially a 50% duty cycle. Here is pi times two, because we need this for doing our, we're going to do what I should mention. We're going to do a sine wave example with our DAC. We're going to turn our DAC output into a sine wave. And so I need pi. We're going to use 100 samples to do it. Here's the array we're going to serve our, store our samples in. And this is a count for just, just executing the waveform that you'll see here later. So I'm creating two pulse width modulation signals, one on pin 10. This is just going to be the standard one that you saw with the 50% duty cycle, and then one on pin four. And this is what we're going to use to do our sine wave. This function right here, I'll show it later. I got this from the Arduino website, but it's, it's a function that allows you to change the frequency of the pulse width modulation signal. And I'll show you that function later. But basically, this represents pin 10, and then one means set it for the highest value possible, and that's what we saw, 31 kilohertz. And then they have a bunch of other settings you can do, whether it's 500 hertz and a bunch of values in between. Then I do the analog right. Oh, actually, I was testing earlier, and I, I did a, a zero value. But for our example, I was using 127. Now these variables I'm going to use for building the sine wave. And I'm not going to go into the math of a sine wave, but the idea is here's where I'm building my sine wave. And I do a for loop to do 100 samples. And this is where I'm storing the waveform. And so I do first my internal calculation, and I equal it to the variable in. And then I feed in into the sine function. Now you might be asking, well, why are you doing plus 100 set 127.5? The DAC is 8-bit, excuse me, the pulse width modulation signal for Arduino is 8-bit. So that's 255, 0 to 255. 127.5 is half of 255. Arduinos can't put out negative voltage. A sine wave will, will have a negative and positive element. So what I'm doing is adding this to it so it raises the sine wave so it never goes below 0. All right, then I just do the main loop. And I have this function called bitbang pwm, and that's what I'm going to use to print out my waveform samples. So why do I say bitbang? Because I'm actually going to make a pulse width modulation signal. I'm not going to use the built-in capabilities of Arduino. So what I do for that is I get my samples in, I map them to a period of, actually I want this to be a thousand because this is what I showed in the example. I map them to a period of a thousand. So a a thousand, I'm using this micros function. So this is really one, milli, one millisecond because I'm using micros. And what I do is I say, how long does this pulse width modulation signal need to be on? What's its duty cycle? And then I say, start a timer, go high on the output and wait until the duty cycle is over, then start another timer and go low. So I'm creating each pulse width modulation cycle uh, I, want to say, I almost said by hand, but obviously not by hand, by manually, let's say manually. And that's going to allow us to do a dynamic change to create a DAC output. Okay, lastly, this is notes on the function that I pulled from the Arduino website. I forget who made it, but whoever did that, great job. And they talk about this function and using it. And this is going to allow us to set our pulse width modulation frequency. Now, and this is what we're going to use on pin 10. And this is what you saw in the pictures that I showed you when you saw the 500 hertz. If we want to do 500 hertz, we would do 64. Or we did, I showed you 31K. Now, it's important to note that if you use this function, other things in Arduino will stop working. And this is what these notes are explaining. And I'll have this code on my blog if you want to cut and paste it. But also, here's the link to the code on Arduino, on Arduino's web pages.
Okay, so that was a quick run through of the code. It'll have notes, it has notes in it, and you can grab it from my website. All right, now we're gonna see a video of creating the, the sine wave, our DAC output sine wave from a pulse width modulation signal. So here is my Arduino Uno that I loaded that code you just saw on. We're pulling it from pin four. Remember I had pin four set up to do the, the dynamic DAC output. Here's my filter circuit. Now, if you, once again, if you wanna see this design, I'll have a link to the, the video in the description section of this video. Uh, but and you'll find more information on this but basically I took off the gain amplifier because I'm not trying to amplify the signal at this point and here is my filter right here and then I'm measuring it here's my power supply this red and black lead and then I have a scope leads uh, for measuring the output and I have another scope lead to measure the input so you can see both of them so there's my power supply and then I'm going to go up to the scope and there we are so look at that. So here is the pulse width modulation signal, and here is my sine wave. And you can see that they get the signal, obviously I need to make the horizontal display bigger to see every little pulse width modulation signal. They're a little too crunched here, but what we can see here though is when you have a low and a high, you start to see some daylight here, right? Because here we have mainly lows, we have a very low high duty cycle, and then at the highs we have real long high cycles with no low cycles, and that's why you can see some daylight here. You can see our signal is about 10 hertz. It should be 10 hertz, because if you look at the period settings I have in the, the code, you can see how I did the timing, and so basically one complete cycle is about uh, 100 milliseconds, which is 10 hertz. Now, we're gonna see in a second, if I turn up the frequency much higher, the cutoff frequency of my filter can actually attenuate it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna adjust this period value. I have it at 1000 right now, which basically equals 10 hertz for our sine wave. I'm gonna lower it to 100, and that's essentially gonna increase my frequency by 10. So I'm gonna go from 10 hertz to 100 hertz. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna upload this to the Arduino Uno that you saw, and then I'm gonna go back. I need to bring up the pulse width modulation signal in a second, there it is. And so what are we looking at? We're now looking at a signal, hmm, this is 60 hertz. I may not have this signal. Yeah, I don't know why it's not picking up that frequency. Anyway, this is the signal. And one thing I wanted to point out here is we still should have the same amplitude, but what's happening here is the filter is actually attenuating this signal because the DAC frequency is getting too high that the, the filter is not letting those frequency elements pass because this is about 100 hertz. So our filter is attenuating it because remember, our filter's cutoff frequency is 100 hertz. So if I wanted to get 100 hertz sine wave, I'd have to move my cutoff frequency of my filter farther out. So once again, it's all about this balance of what your filter setting is versus what you can do on the output of your DAC. And that's one of the points I was trying to hammer home here. Okay, that's it for converting an Arduino pulse width modulation output to a DAC output. And if you have any tips or comments to add, use the comment section below the video, or if you have a question from the video, use the comment section below. And if you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.